Can you build a gaming PC for under 250 bucks using only AliExpress parts? Let's find out right after this. All right guys, so I picked up all these parts from AliExpress for this build. Now the one thing I didn't buy was a power supply. I already had a 400 watt power supply, which should be sufficient for this, but that's why I kind of included that with the price of 250, because all you see in front of me, of me right here costs $200, actually 199 plus tax. So that's a little bit of budget in there for a power supply. So as you can see here, we got a case, we got some fans, the motherboard CPU, RAM, our graphics card and our SSD and a CPU fan. So let's just briefly or quickly go over the parts and then we'll try to put this uh, computer together and let's see how well it games because this is gonna be a low-end gaming PC. So it's not gonna be something that's gonna be play your latest, greatest titles and high settings, but you should be able to play eSports titles and stuff like that at 720p or maybe even 1080p. So for the CPU, motherboard and the RAM combo. It all comes together in a package from AliExpress. And this is, you know, it's, it's very basic, but this is a little bit older, but this is only $63 for this combination. That's crazy. Inside of here, we get our motherboard, which is an X99. Let's just get this open here. X99 motherboard. And this is a machinist or machinist. I don't know exactly how you say their name, but that's the brand of this motherboard. And you can see very little uh, motherboard. And inside of here, they already have the CPU installed. Now this CPU is from 2016, it is a bit older. It's a Xeon processor. So it was a server processor when it was initially released. This is the E5 2650V4. This is a 12 core, 24 thread processor. That's a lot of cores and a lot of threads. And back when this was released in the first quarter of 2016, this cost almost $1,200 for just the CPU. And you're getting it with a motherboard and RAM for $63 on AliExpress. Now, that price will vary a little bit, but that's what I paid for it about a month ago when I ordered this. And you also get two sticks of eight gig DDR4 RAM, so 16 gigs total. They don't have the speed on here, so I don't know if it's, if it's 2166, uh, 2400, I don't know exactly the speed of this RAM. It doesn't even say it on here, but it is DDR4 and it will be running in dual channel. So you're getting, a, you're getting you know, a, a decent CPU with a lot of cores and a lot of threads. Motherboard in RAM for $63, and it's, the CPU I'm sure is used but everything else you can see in this build is new. This would be the only used component in this entire build. For the SSD, we have a 256 gig best toss. This is a Gen 3, um, and that's all this is compatible with, because this will take an M.2, so that's nice. You know, that's something they kind of upgraded on this. So you got an M.2 slot, Gen 3, 256 gigs. It's not a lot of storage. It'll be enough for Windows and a few games. You could easily throw like a one terabyte SATA drive in there for a little bit of money, about you know, 30 bucks or so, and add a lot more games to it. But this will be enough just for our basic testing. This was $18. If you do buy an SSD, an M2 off of AliExpress, just make sure that you kind of look around. There's a lot of imitation fake ones, like fake Samsungs and that. You don't want to buy those. This one seems to be a legitimate, decent uh, SSD that ought to be just fine for this build. For the case, we've got this powertrain. This is a little micro ATX, ITX case. Very, very small, very, very lightweight. You can see him here picking it up. But I thought it looked pretty sharp. This was $40. And it does have, you know, this glass side panel here. And it does, it does feel like glass. It could be plastic, but it's, it still is clear. And, and the, you know, the plastic uh, film is on here. So it'll look a little bit better when I pull that film off. And I just like this kind of the little aquarium kind of look they've been going for in some of these newer cases. I think this is going to look pretty sharp. Now, again, it's cheap, $40. It's a little bit, now this table's a little wobbly, but on my kitchen table, it was a little bit rocked around a little bit. So it may be a little bit unlevel. We'll see once I get the weight of the power supply and the components in here, 
if maybe this is a you know level itself out if not i have to just put a few shims or something under one of the feet to kind of level it out again this is really cheap but i kind of like the look of it i'm kind of going for as much of a white look as we have here now my power supply i don't have it here in front of me that's just a uh, one I had from Micro Center that was laying around, and that one is not white, but hopefully a lot of the, that'll be hidden down where the power supply goes. For the CPU fan, I got a this uh, X99 compatible fan. Looks pretty nice. You wanna make sure you pull this film off whenever you do put it on there. And I've got some thermal compound laying around. I believe this may have RGB on it as well and it is white so i hope to kind of match our color scheme that we're going for and i have these fans i picked up four of these um i think these are 100 and yeah, 120 millimeter case fans this is from aigo or igo i don't know exactly how you pronounce it i've used their stuff in the past i had a water cooler that finally failed after my eight years you know it, it, i used it for years so they're, they're a pretty well-known brand i think they sell on amazon as well so these ought to be fine to help get these in here get a few in the top and bottom and the rear to help cool this build this ought to, this shouldn't run real real hot and then for the gpu we have a soil brand rx554 gig card now this is the lowest end of the 500 series this is an old car what maybe my eight years seven eight years i don't know these are old but they're still supported by AMD. This, again, this should be able to play some lower end games. Now, if you want to spend a little bit more money, yes. You can get like an RX 580 for sometimes like 80 bucks. This was $40 new on AliExpress. Spend a little bit more money, get a 570, 580. Yeah, you're gonna be able to play a lot more games. If a little bit more budget, I would go for that. I was trying to keep this at around $200 whenever I initially did it. Of course, we're going 250 because I needed to include the price of that power supply in here that is not included. But if you just bought these components, you're looking at 200 bucks. So this ought to be able to play, you know, your Fortnite, um, some of your esports titles, Valorant, and that um, on lower settings, um, 720p or 1080p. And of course, we'll use FSR whenever we have the uh, when the games are compatible to be able to uh, boost those frame rates even though we will be lowering the image quality a little bit. All right, that's all the components for this. What we'll do next, kind of show you guys how we, uh, I'll do this build, get the uh, components all installed in the case, and then we'll kind of do the testing and see what kind of results and FPS we get with this build. So I'll be right back. All right, so the first thing you want to do here is we're going to tighten this bracket down. For some reason, it doesn't come with it all the way tightened down. We want to make sure we get this, just snug it up so that the uh, bracket is, securely mounted to the motherboard. So you wanna do this with all this with the motherboard, all this outside of the case. Years ago, I used to build computers. For some reason, I'd stick it all in the case. And <laughs> it gives you a lot less room. I don't know why, I just guess it wasn't really thinking or something. Just snug this down. Okay, and now what we wanna do is we wanna put some thermal compound down, uh, a bead of thermal compound here. Um, on the middle of the CPU, so let me grab that. Now we got some thermal compound here. What I do is just put a bead, a, like a pea size amount in the middle. Seems to do an X pattern. I like to put a bead because then it can spread out evenly. An X, you may not, you know, it may not really apply itself equally, in my opinion. So what we're going to do is just put a bead of that here in the middle. And that uh, probably is enough. You don't want to put too much, but we want to get just enough of it there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to install the CPU fan. Now, the rear of the motherboard's back here, so I would probably put it this way so that the exhaust or the heat is being blown out towards the rear and then uh, vented out, the heat is vented outside of the case. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put this down and then we're gonna attach on each side. Now, first thing you wanna do is you wanna peel off this plastic, like I mentioned at the beginning, and now our copper heat pipes are exposed. And now we're just going to uh, put that down here. So let's just try to get that applied.
Okay, once you get it on attached on one side, then you need to try to press this down on the other side and get it attached on the other side. And it does take some force. And there we go. Now we got it. Just want to double check them. Make sure that they are securely onto the little snaps and that we have it all in place. So that should be good to go. And now we're going to take the CPU fan. We need to hook that up over here. There's a three or four pin. This is a three. So you're just going to line it up right here. And we're going to plug this in. You just want to kind of try to hide your wire here and get it out of the way. We'll do that better once we get it in installed into the uh, case. So that ought to be good for getting the uh, motherboard and the CPU fan installed. All right, next up we need to install our M.2. This is, a, like I said, a Gen 3, and it is an NVMe SSD as well. So that's better than your typical than your SATA ones. So what you're going to do is you take this little uh, screw out, which I already took out here, little bitty Phillips screw, and we're going to line up the notch. We're going to get it in here. Just kind of press it in and we're just going to bring it down and we'll put this little screw in there just to secure it into place. Very easy. These are so nice installing these because you don't have to worry about um, cables. There's no SATA cables. Okay, and just tighten this down and your M.2 is installed. Now, there's some dip switches on the back here that they mention on the website and on the listing for, I believe it was for, I think it was maybe for whether it was SATA or NVMe, I can't remember. I know all I know is that the dip switches are in the correct location for this setup. I'll try to uh, put a picture up here from the AliExpress listing or the website showing you when you would need to move those jumpers, They're not dip switches or jumpers, excuse me. Move those jumpers. And I just don't remember exactly, I just remember that where they were right now is where they should be for my setup, but I can't remember why you needed to switch them. I don't know if it was for a SATA uh, M.2. I think that may be what it was. So I'll put a picture of that up there if I can find it. All right, quick update now. So what we're gonna do next is now that we have the motherboard kind of ready to go, we're gonna put some of these case fans in. So I had bought enough case fans to put some on the top and the rear and the bottom. Now, one thing I noticed with this particular case, now you may not buy the same case. You can find other ones at AliExpress, similar price. So keep in mind, AliExpress is not always the greatest place to buy cases because the price may look good and then they may have an insane shipping charge because these cases can be big and they can be heavy and it's difficult for them to provide you with free shipping. Now, I was lucky enough, this one was free shipping. I'm sure it came on a slow boat from China, as they say. It just took a month to get here. Everything else got here in a few weeks. I was waiting an additional two weeks or so for four weeks total for this case to actually arrive. Now I have the, the power supply installed, so I may have to remove that. The power supply is down here. As you'll see if I flip it around again, that it is um, not a modular. So we have all these excess cables that I'll have to just kind of pack in here. Again, if you're gonna cut down on cost, you're gonna to have to not have a modular power supply since those do cost considerably more. Also, the motherboard doesn't appear to have any RGB headers. So you're not going to be able to have like light control of the color scheme for the lights. I don't see any headers. If I do find one, I'll let you know, but I looked around and don't see any. And as I mentioned, there's no instruction manual provided with this that there's some stuff online so that means you're just going to be connecting the power to uh, one of the fan powers on the board and then you can daisy chain these together connect them together but yeah we're going to get these top installed in the top and then i'll have to look into the bottom and then we'll get the motherboard installed so we'll be right back all right so i hit, put the three of the case fans in i actually had four of them i don't know why i thought i had five so i only would have had an extra one to put on the bottom. And as I mentioned a while ago, the screw holes are not big enough. There's not much room to get a screwdriver in there. And of course I'd need to take the power supply out even to get in there. So I'm just gonna go with these three that should vent the air out the top and out the rear here. And this shouldn't be a very hot system the way it is. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the 
motherboard in. Now I did attach these three fans. They're daisy chained here in the rear. Of course, we have to get some um, cable management going here. It's a bit sloppy at the moment, but I'm just running them out the rear here and then they're attached in the in the back panel of the uh, case. So the, the motherboard will need to go in here. Now, one thing I forgot to mention earlier is that these boards never ship with a CMOS battery in them whenever they come from China. So you do need to get a CR2032 battery. I had some laying around. You can get those at Walmart or Amazon and snap that in there. That'll be so your bio settings are all safe. And then you need to put the IO shield on. So I already have the IO shield installed. It's under, it's behind me, turn it around here. It's knocked the screwdriver off. It's back here. So you just snap that in. You need to, to uh, remove the ethernet um, little panel that's in front of it. I already did that. And we're just going to get the motherboard in here and then try to, uh, you know, get these wires out of the way. And we need to get them screwed down to the uh, motherboard mount. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna, this is not the greatest because I got all these wires for the um, power supply. So I'm gonna see if I can try to get these tucked up in here. Let's just try to turn this around like that and see if I can uh, get this a little bit better. Just try to get it in here. And this should be pretty close. And once we get that in there, we're just gonna they give you a bag of screws, which I have over there. And I'll go ahead and get these screwed in. You don't need to see everything on camera. Let's make this video really long. So I can get it just screwed down. Then we'll run the, the uh, fan headers up and connect those so that they have power. So let me uh, get this uh, screwed in and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got the motherboard mounted down. I did have to move, I actually add a uh, post here. There was one that was needed for the motherboard. You can move it over. They give you a couple additional. You can just put one on. I think it was this one right here. And then we get them all tightened down. And then I ran the header for these fans that are daisy chained up and plugged it in back in here. And then I got the USB 2 and USB 3. And then the pins for the power button on the case, the reset switch, the hard drive activity, that stuff. And I'll put a picture up here that I took off the website um, that shows you the layout. It is labeled, but it's very difficult to see because it is color coordinated, but it's hard to read that, um, especially older like me. So I'll put a picture up here if you want to know just where everything goes. You're not going to hurt anything plugging those in wrong, but you might not get the computer to turn on if you don't do that correctly. So the next thing I need to do now is just run the power supply up. I'm gonna connect the uh, main power, the auxiliary power, and then we need to run some power for the uh, GPU once we get it installed. So I'll be right back. All right, so I've got everything pretty much connected now. We got the power connected here, the auxiliary power connected back there. We don't have to worry about a lot of SATA cables because in this build, if we just went with the 256 gig drive, but you'd probably wanna go with a bigger drive. Again, we're trying to go on a shoestring budget here. There's not any kind of cables. Now I am going to put a SATA drive in. I noticed there's not in really in this small case. We don't have any location for a full size hard drive. You might be able to cram one in down by the power supply, but there's no connect, uh, mounting spots. And you don't want a spin drive needs to be securely mounted in place. I was gonna throw at one point my old four terabyte drive in here. I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that. But a little, SATA SSD like this is no problem to get in here. Now, you could mount it along here on the bottom. It look kind of tacky though. So what I'm gonna probably do is I'm just going to tuck it up in the back behind the power supply and run a SATA cable out here and connect it. And I'll just, you know, you can, these don't have to be securely mounted. You can just tuck it in there. If you wanna put it inside the case, you can just use a little double-sided tape or Velcro just so it doesn't slide around. So I do, plan on adding some additional storage that I had laying around. But you know, as this, this will be 256 gigs. So the last thing we need to do is to put the graphics card in. So I went ahead and took off the little um, plastic piece here. And then you need to take off uh, this card. You need to take off two, it's a you know two slot here. And then you just need to push this little snapping bra uh, bracket piece back on the PCI slot. And then you have to take this little locking piece off. It's kind of hard to see here in the camera angle. It's this little thing here. 
so we can get the graphics card in there then just to, I think put that back on to lock it into place so let's just go ahead and get the graphics card in here and try to get it into place Make sure this locks up on the rear. And we just put the other piece in and get this locked into place. And our graphics card is good to go. I just wanna kinda push the USB 3 wire down so it's away from, you wanna make sure that any wires are here away from your, your GPU fan, it doesn't get caught up in there, obstruct the fan from turning and having to overheat. Now you can get a much bigger card in here. Now, keep in mind, not only did we wanna go on a budget, but you know, this being an older CPU that was originally not even made for home use, you know, it's, you're gonna reach a CPU bottleneck pretty quick if you went with a much better graphics card. I have a 5500 XT laying around that I may at some point for my own personal use put in there. But if you start to get up to the you know real recent graphics cards, you know, something better than a 1650 or something, you're gonna, like I said, run into some CPU bottlenecks, but we shouldn't have that problem on this 550 and then we'll get windows installed i'm going to try to put windows 11 on that is not by default compatible with this older system but using something like rufus there's ways you can uh, have it bypass some of those checks and see if it will install if not if it doesn't if i can't get it on then we'll just go ahead and put windows 10 on we'll see which windows version i'm able to get installed so let me go and get this all connected and we'll be back all right now for the moment of truth let's get this fired up make sure it powers up one thing that I uh, noticed here is I had these fans the wrong way. I had them colliding. So now I got them with all the air should be going out the back. So I had to flip this fan around. Also the, the A uh, RGB controllers, you know, the, the, the plugs for these are not having receiving power right now. While I go, I thought they would just run randomly, but you know, that's why they have separate wires. So I do have an uh, A RGB controller coming worth a little remote for 10 bucks from Amazon. That's not included in this cost. That will power up the RGB on these lights, these three uh, case fans. So that's not included, obviously, in the price. But for now, they should just spin up and just operate. But they, do, they won't have any RGB. The only RGB should be on the CPU fan. So let's go ahead and let's fire this up and uh, make sure it turns on. And it does. All right. And that's like I said, that light you see glowing there is just from the CPU fan. So everything's fired up. We have to get it to a monitor and make sure it works. Let's go ahead now and the moment a lot of you guys like to watch that peeling feeling. Let's peel off the glass here, the uh, protective film. There may be some more here. I'll have to look and see, but yeah. Now it looks really good. I mean, I like this case. It is not the highest build quality, but it looks good and it's really cheap. All right, let's go ahead and get this connected to a monitor, get Windows installed, and let's test out the gaming performance. First up, Battlefield 5. It's a 720p medium settings. I'm getting about 55 to 60 FPS. Interestingly enough, the CPU utilization is actually not that high, so it's not really breaking the sweat on the Xeon. We're actually reaching more of a GPU bottleneck than anything, which is a bit surprising. You can see on 56 there, 99th percentile of I don't feel any real noticeable input lag and I'm not getting any kind of stuttery, you know, uh, stuttery playback that I actually saw whenever I was using this card in the past on a, uh, not this exact same card, but using it on a, um, a Dell system.
All right, next up, Apex Legends, 1600 by 900, sort of in between 1080p and 720p. And this is a mix of mostly high and some medium and a few low settings. More high than low to kind of preserve some image quality because I noticed that 720p did not uh, look good at all. But we're getting around 55 to 60 FPS. And this is just a training mission here, so obviously it's going to be uh, lower FPS, I'm sure, doing heavy battle with a lot of people moving around. I'm just doing this so I can uh, show you guys an example of how it looks and not be under the stress of actual gameplay so I can actually talk and not get a tongue tied. So not bad at all. I mean, it, it, it has a bit of, you know, there's not the greatest looking graphics here, but uh, it's not terrible by any means. And it certainly would get the job done. All right, now we're playing Fortnite, 1080p. So set the performance mode. I'm gonna get in about 55 FPS here. But there is some stutter at times, um, but the input lag doesn't feel bad at all. CPU utilization is at 21%, so, you know, it, our GPU is what's been bottlenecking us in these games. And I thought that sometimes the CPU might be, but it's, it's just, it's just, you know, 550. But we are 1080p, and we're getting you know close to 60 here. Right at 60 FPS right now, and not too bad. Like I said, there are times where the gameplay is definitely affected um, because of some of the stutter. Which I sort of expected, you know, it happens with this 550. But this is a $40 graphics card brand new. So it's kind of hard to expect too much or to complain too much. Hear Metallica in the background. <laughs> Hopefully we won't have any uh, copyright restrictions for that. Just want to kind of run around here and see how the game feels without actually actual battles here. Just kind of getting a lot of movement and a lot of motion. And we're right pretty much locked most of the time at 60 FPS. And last up we have Resident Evil Village. 1080p with FSR set to performance mode. And we're getting around 80, you know, mid 80s, 87 FPS right now. It's like I said to you too scary for you. And graphically, I think it looks pretty good still. And I admit the game's a bit dark. There's a lot of glare here, so it may not be showing up too well on my camera. Now, this is not the most graphically intense uh, part of the game or the most intense in terms of battle or anything like that with guns or anything, but it still plays really well. Just doing a little walking around here, not really trying to play the game per se, and more just kind of walk around and get an idea what kind of FPS we get. Just going to the bathroom with hearing the baby. I 
I would expect the FPS to probably be in the 70s whenever you're actually in a more intensive scenes with a gun battle and stuff against some of the creatures. But here was not so active. We're getting sometimes at right now 91, 96. So overall, pretty good little system we have here that can play quite a few games, especially your esports titles. It's 720p or 1080p. And some of these games, such as Resident Evil, uh, Resident Evil Village, I should say, um, at a pretty good frame rate, if you're willing to use FSR on the lower quality settings. And at best of all, this system costs between $200 and $250. It looks really fantastic as well. So if you're interested in picking up the components I use to build this system, you just go head on over to AliExpress. You can use those affiliate links I have down in the video description for every single one of the parts. It does help support the channel. Piece this together. A couple of weeks, you'll get everything if you're in the United States. Just if you do go with the case, you may have to wait maybe up to a month to get it. But hey, it was only $40. All right, guys, that wraps up this review and build of this budget $250 AliExpress system. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I do a lot of RC reviews, drone reviews, and sometimes tech stuff, such as computer stuff. And while you're at it, click the bell. That way you're notified when I do upload new videos. And as always, guys, have a great day.